As you may have already seen, a bunch of content creators and their friends were invited by Embark Studios to stream and record gameplay of the new content for Season 3 of the finals, including the new Kyoto 1568 map and the new weapons, gadgets, specializations and battle pass items. I spent the event recording footage in private matches with Arcade and Atsuhiro, a couple of avid easter egg hunters from the community, so that I could provide you this overall guide to the new Kyoto Arena. Thanks to them for joining me to record footage of the map and thanks to Embark for the invite to the event. Together we also uncovered a few easter eggs while exploring so I'll go over those as I take you on this guided tour. Before we dive in I have to say that the Kyoto map looks amazing. It's a real credit to the environmental and art team at Embark for creating such a beautiful environment. During this tour I'll refer to this official map which has just been published by Embark and which I have annotated with additional info including nicknames for some of the buildings to potentially help you communicate those to your teammates as well as other features that might be helpful. I've linked a downloadable copy of the map in the video description which you're welcome to use. If you use it for content creation purposes please credit and bark for the base map and my channel for the additional annotations. The new arena is based on part of Kyoto set in feudal Japan in 1568 that nestles into a hillside. As a result it provides players with quite a lot of verticality. It slopes from its highest points in the north down towards the south and southeast and it sort of does this in steps with several large retaining walls crossing the map which limits upward traversal in those areas to jump pads and zip lines. The hilly parts of the arena mostly have the blue mesh holographic boundary along their slopes and the lower parts either have a wall or just the blue mesh. The Kyoto map also sees the first introduction of flowing streams and ponds. Here's the main areas of water with the inflow and outflow shown. Your character can wade into the water although they're not deep enough to require swimming. Overall the map can also be loosely divided into four zones. Hillside, West, Low and Pagoda and I'll take you on a quick tour through each zone in that order. Hillside zone which as the name suggests is the steepest and most elevated part of the map in the north and northeast. It includes a steeply sloping bamboo grove with pathways meandering through the tall bamboo. Off trail you have to wind your way through the bamboo and there are some very steep sections. When the map has the moving platforms variant the platforms will actually break the bamboo as you move through the area adding to the chaos. On the western edge of this zone are some partly covered stairs that zigzag up the hill. The highest building on the map is called Hillside on the official map and it's right next to the northern map boundary. While this house is relatively small compared to many of the buildings on the map, the interior is like many others. Beautifully lit rooms, wooden framing and mural art on the walls. You can see that all the doors in the houses are open and that's the case right across the map so there's no opening or closing of doors on this map. Many of the houses are designed in a similar style to this one with the feeling of having multiple lanes through the house in the form of rooms that you can run through one after another, sometimes paralleled by hallways and there are often external lanes in the form of timber decks that allow flanking options. Pretty much all the buildings on the map have space beneath their floor that you can enter through via trapdoors in the building or through exterior entrances which you might have to melee to gain access. This gives you a lot of options for how to enter most buildings. At the east end of the hillside zone we have the bell tower which sits atop a cliff. This has a couple of zip lines internally to gain access to the top balcony where you can have a great view of the low zone. The bell in the tower rings out when you hit it and you can do that even when it's been broken into pieces. That noise can be heard a long way across the map. If you happen to fall off the bell tower down to the bottom of the cliff below it there's a conveniently placed fixed jump pad there and it demonstrates one of the things I find most satisfying on the map and that's several jump pads which when used place you almost perfectly through a doorway. It makes you feel like you're in some kind of Japanese martial arts film. Immediately west of the bell tower is the house I'm calling Big Deck because it has, well, a big deck. This is a relatively small house with good views towards the low zone similar to the bell tower. A feature of the house are these gongs on the wall that you can ring out. It also has a basement space like most others. We also found one of the first easter eggs on the map here. If you go to the east side of the house during the night variant of the map you can see fireflies buzzing around the stone lanterns and these are a luminescent version of the flying dollar bill flies that you can see near any garbage bag on other maps like Las Vegas. 
Vegas. Continuing to the west, the building labelled Admin is pretty much immediately downhill from the hillside house. And this is a large two level house with expansive rooms and balconies all around. It also provides a good view of the Grand Pagoda building which I'll come back to later. Okay let's move over to the west side of the map. At the north end of this zone is one of the most visually striking buildings on the map. This is what I'm calling the Golden Pavilion because it's likely modelled after the Temple of the Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. This building is almost completely yellow inside and out and looks stunning in the night version of the map. It has a dimly lit basement space underneath giving the building four levels overall. The map's boundary is located behind the Golden Pavilion. You can also spot koi fish swimming in the stream next to the pavilion but you can't shoot them with a bow and arrow I learned. The stream leads to a large pool in front of the pavilion. It's a great spot for capturing your new emotes. Along the western boundary of the west zone are some medium sized houses most of which are single level with a basement space beneath. The middle and southern portions of the west zone are occupied by three very large buildings including what I call the courtyard building. Courtyard has some parts that are two levels and it has a central courtyard with a fish pond and a large tree growing in it. Again lots of awesome wall art in these buildings. Courtyard includes an easter egg that can be seen in at least one other building on the map. These little writing tables have two pieces of Japanese writing on them on the white paper here and also on the little black tab here. When we use Google Lens on these it told us that the white paper reads with love and the black tab reads Ariad which is the CNS character we were introduced to in season 2 so a pretty cool embark and CNS related easter egg there. I also discovered here that these straw rice barrels actually contain rice that spills out when you break them. Neat little attention to detail there from the embark team. Before we leave the courtyard building you can see here from on the roof just how tall the Japanese black pine is that's growing in the internal courtyard of it. The southern end of the west zone has a large guest house that I like to call the big owl because of its shape. Next we have the low zone which is a pretty much flat area with a lot of water. Starting in the north there's a small house immediately below the bell tower which I'm calling below bell tower. And then we have a large complex that dominates much of the zone. I'm calling this red panels based on its red panel lined interior. You might recognize this room in it from the season 3 trailer. This complex comprises several structures joined together by covered walkways and it partly stands directly over the water with an internal water courtyard in one of the buildings. This building actually gets demolished by the lower of two groups of moving platforms during that variant of the map. Kind of in the middle of the water in this zone is what I'm calling the pool room which is very small. The Australians in the audience will hopefully appreciate the name. This is going straight to the pool room. Near the pool room is what has to be the world's shortest zip line. On the south side of the low zone we have the stables and what I'm calling the stable master's house across the road from the stables. We found another easter egg in the stables. If you look at the saddles lying around here on the side of them they have this emblem which closely matches that of the Japanese Azai clan. The Azai were a line of feudal lords that were a dominant clan in Japan during the 1500s. The stable master's house is a pretty large two level building with a walled courtyard right next to the outflow of the stream and there's a smallish house between that and red panels you might like to call that outflow if you need a name for it. Onto the last but certainly not least zone located in the middle of the map and acting as an excellent navigation point we have the pagoda zone which is made up of four pagodas or temples the entrance pagoda, the small pagoda, the tall pagoda and the Grand Pagoda. The entrance pagoda probably has the single most satisfying jump pad on the map next to it with it launching you absolutely perfectly through the pagoda's doorway. It's like the jump pad equivalent of ASMR. Small pagoda is pretty inconsequential, maybe just providing you a bit of cover when you need it. Tall pagoda is probably the most recognizable building on the map simply because of its height. It has a large fixed jump pad inside it that takes you right to the top level but you can also use a series of back and forth style trap doors and ladders to go up level by level if you want a more stealthy approach. Tall Pagoda's narrow base makes it relatively easy to topple as well and being next to a large retaining wall you can bring the whole structure down into the low zone really changing up the play. Grand Pagoda is a large multi-level building and it also has a basement space so you can access it from below. It's a spectacular building inside, the ceiling is an absolute work of art. Lastly we have the wind chimes which is really just a covered walkway with 
lots of wind chimes hanging from it. A peaceful spot to hang out, but also home to another Easter egg. The Japanese writing on these wind chimes seems to have two different messages. One that reads, steal the spotlight, and another that reads, take a break and relax. And on that note, we end our introductory tour of the Kyoto map. Please exit through the gift shop where you can do the usual YouTube business if you want to see more videos from me from now on. Give a like or comment as you see fit and enjoy the rest of your day. Kia kaha, stay strong. Everybody knows the world ain't right Down on your knees Get up and fight